Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, my name is Polly. Uh, so today we are um, looking at my ET125 um, and my redesign for the canopy. Let me just get the old canopy first. Uh, so here's the old canopy. Um, it fit in like a true X basically and I'm running these uh, HQ 65 millimeter props. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is the canopy. Uh, the reason why I upgraded this canopy is because I wanted additional features. First I upgraded to an XD30 um, and my battery um, pads kept on getting ripped off because there was nothing to, to fasten it to. So uh, I uh, went in and changed that. Um, I also wanted to, um, oh, I got a new ESC because my old ESC is burnt out and um, the old, it's really weird, but when I disassemble it, I'll show you, the old ESCs, uh, these new ESCs, sorry, they don't fit the old canopy. I also wanted an adjustable camera, and I also wanted to mount an action camera on it. So if you look at it over here, um, you'll see this is my canopy. I haven't mounted it on this one particularly yet, um, but um, I wanted to mount a naked, this is my SJ8000. So if you want to go watch my video on that, I'll show you how to make one of these if you have an action camera. If you don't have one and you want to get one, I wouldn't suggest it, I'd probably just get a Caddx Loris or something like that. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I just wanted a cleaner way to um, interact with this quad. Um, and oh, I also wanted a clear USB access. Uh, you can't see it there, but I have clear USB access to my upgraded uh, flight controller. And I also wanted a lead for my naked uh, FJ8000. So there we go. Um, oh, I should also mention uh, these props. Um, a lot of people want to run three inch props on this because the jump from 2.5 inches to three inch from what I've heard is quite dramatic and it's a good improvement. So like, honestly, that would have been a good idea. Um, but first of all, the frame doesn't support it. And second, um, these motors don't support it. These motors specifically say if you're running on 3S, you want to run something uh, either two blade 2.5 inch or 65 millimeters, uh, which is the same thing, more or less, um, or you run uh, a three blade two inch. And two inch, uh, the performance isn't really good from what I've heard, so I just stuck with its two blades. To be honest, I haven't flown it very much, um, but I'll find out. Um, and this came stock with three blades. And so if you're running three blades, 2.5 inch, you'd probably run it on 2S. If you're running two blades on uh, three inch, uh, you want to run 2S as well. And I wanted to run 3S because I had some extra packs and I didn't want to waste them. So yeah, uh, let's just disassemble it and show you what it's like. Oh, I also should mention I upgraded to this Velcro because I couldn't figure out a way to use the stock um, uh, elastic. So, oh, I got the wrong bit. So it's held in by um, three M2 uh, by eight millimeter uh, hex screws. I mean, you can use whatever type of screw you want, but uh, that's what I used. Um, uh, I, the one that came with this was a Phillips and Phillips tends to strip really easily. So I switched uh, out of the Phillips because uh, I found that really annoying, I, especially since I had to constantly um, um, remove the canopy if I wanted to access the flight controller. And that's kind of annoying if it kept on getting stripped, so I, I didn't want to bother with it. So, seriously, still not the right bit. I'm using a security Torx for a hex, because I, I lost my hex uh, bit, which is funny. Seriously, it's not this one either. Okay, just give me a second. I almost got it. Uh, I gotta be honest with you, I couldn't figure out the adjustable camera too much. Uh, and I'll show you that a bit later. But uh, first let's unscrew it and see what's inside. Uh, so I, uh, my ESC burned out and I figured uh, I would get a new ESC. Um, sorry, yeah. And I figured I would get a new ESC. Um, and the new ESC was about 20 bucks. It was a Sky Stores BL Heli S, which is still pretty old, but to be honest, I won't know the difference between BL S and BL Heli S and BL Heli 32. And honestly, this one's D shot from what I upgraded it from. I don't think mine was D shot before. So it's already a massive improvement. Um, and the last time I also ripped off one of my ESC's power pads, which sucks, which is why I learned my lesson to always um, secure your power lead somehow. 
uh, so you don't rip them off and end up wasting an ESC. Because even with broken like three and one ESCs, um, it's it's fine to be honest. If you want to use it for aircraft, like small sub two fifty flying wings, um, but if you have a ripped power pad, you really can't do much. So there you go. Uh, so I'm just gonna remove this one over here as well. And uh, should be good. Oh no, still a bit more. So there's a lot going on. I don't really have cable management down to an art yet, but I'm working on it. Um, so let me just um, bring this USB cable back in. So here's what I'm running here. I'm running a Sky Stars Mini Talon F4. This was, uh, as you know already, a uh, Pico Pico uh, Pico. BLX, Pico BLX, I think, uh, clone, and that was an F3, F3, and it didn't even have OSD, which was horrible. Guys, you gotta get out OSD. This flight control was about 20 bucks, I think, so it's not bad. It's really small. The, the power leads are really small, which is why I had some trouble soldering it. But you know, just ignore that. Um, um, yeah, so it's it's a good flight controller. I mean, F4, 20 bucks. I can't complain too much. Uh, so basically, the problem was um, these two holes. Uh, sorry, the holes on either sides of the ESCs, um, it's, it's quite hard, I don't think I'll focus, but there are holes on either side that correspond to these two holes, um, and they, they would get in the way of the, the ESCs, or they would barely fit, um, but you'd have to squeeze quite a bit, and you'd also have to um, stretch uh, these posts a bit, and there was like no room to do anything, so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to design another canopy. Um, my new canopy is significantly heavier, and this is, weighs like almost nothing. Um, so let's see. This weighs uh, 4.7 grams, 4.8. If this one has a camera in there, uh, this is my earlier draft, so I'm just gonna use it. It's basically the same weight, it's just a small improvement. This weighs like 10 grams more. Is that 10 grams? Yeah, I think it's 10 grams. Yeah, about 10 grams. Okay, so it's it's really quite heavy, but it does offer a lot of functionality. Um, and I do think it would be more durable as well. And you'll probably get the props out of the view too. That's one thing with the ducks, you got a lot of props in view. Oh, I also removed the ducks, I forgot to mention that, but I'm assuming if you're watching this video and you still have your, your ET125, you probably don't have your ducks on. It's been three years, you're probably throwing out the training wheels, you know? Um, yeah, so, uh, let me just uh, show you um, how to build it. So I have it printed. Um, be careful with this post here. Um, it's quite fragile. So I used, I believe, 40 or 60% infill. Um, from the, the jump from 20% uh, infill to 60% uh, infill was about like a one gram difference. And basically all those grams are going into these two uh, uh, screw boss kind of sections and this post here. So that's quite important. Um, the walls are about the same, and it's 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 a quite a durable frame to be on or the canopy. It's not. I don't think it's going to be break. Uh, it's going to break. It's quite. If it is, it's going to be brittle. I don't think it's going to just flex out of the way like this guy is. This guy is like quite squeezy. Um, so I mean, that's something to consider. Um, I had to, basically with this 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 quad, I had to upgrade everything or replace everything except for the motors, pretty much. Uh, it's kind of sad because I really don't like these motors because they don't do 3S on um, 3 blades to 2.5, like I said, uh, which is unfortunate. I have uh, secured this battery lead with two zip ties, some hot glue, and I also have an extra XD30 on it just so if it gets yanked out or if I want to replace it, then it's going to be a lot easier. Um, oh, I should also mention, not only can you put an action camera at the top here, you can actually top mount your battery, which is something I really wanted because I wanted to do freestyle with this, because uh, I, I, it was like a 3 inch for me at that time. Um, 2.5 inch I don't think was as much as, as a class as it is now. I mean, right now it's still not, but uh, yeah, you get the point. So I wanted to top mount the battery, and you can do that with this frame if you really wanted to. You just have to get a longer Velcro or attach a Velcro onto another. Uh, Velcro. So I printed it like this. I printed it with supports. You don't need that many supports. Um, you basically just need supports for this inside over here. You don't need around this uh, chiseled edge here. So when mounting it, first you got to uh, plug in your camera. Um, so I, well, I, I really like what they did with um, the camera where, um, oh crap. 
<laughs> I'll do it. I have to resolder my camera and lead it. It broke off because these balance connectors are not very good um, for connecting to your camera. They're too heavy. Uh, you generally want the Pico uh, Micro Pico kind of connectors. I don't know what they're called. Uh, they're people call them JSTs, but they're, I've heard they're not JSTs. So uh, yeah. I basically was saying I like what they did with the canopy and uh, using the um, using these wires for uh, connecting to the flight controller instead of just direct soldering it. It's a lot easier to repair. Um, I also had to replace the camera. It's just some cheap ten dollar camera because my goggles aren't. I don't have fat sharks or anything, so I don't think I'll notice the difference that much. It just looks way too vibrant for what it is. Uh, yeah, plug it in. But you you get the point. You can plug it in. Um, so you just want to cover it on top. Uh, I have a slot here for the, the wire, obviously, but you can also um, guide your video transmitter um, antenna through here. Uh, and then you want to also um, feed your, your uh, USB cable, or if you're not using USB cable, whatever you're using to power your maybe Insta360, SMO 4K. Um, and then you just want to plop it on top. Yeah, generally I like top mounting my batteries because I find that I actually kill a lot of my batteries just by landing too hard and crashing bottom first. Um, that could be me because I'm a horrible pilot, but um, I have a feeling, uh, well, even if you're a good pilot, chances are it's better to top mount it um, just in case that does happen to you, even if it's out of your control, maybe you fail safe. Oh, I also added the slot here, so you control the VTX. Um, I have a feeling if you're this far in, you're probably not using the same VTX and and mounting it at the bottom, because I think this is a really awful spot to mount it, but if you want, you can change the channels. Um, this was actually totally by accident. I did not mean to, uh, like I just added the hole to save weight, but it ended up um, doing well. Okay, sorry. So first, um, you're going to want to screw in this front post here. Uh, so this one goes through the, the, the bottom plate. So this is uh, just a prototype um, bo uh, bottom plate, but in the future, um, this is not the one. <laughs> You'll basically just be able to go right through it without um, lifting it up like I am here, but I am just because... Uh, I don't have the final model, so you just screw it in to the bottom front plate. You make sure it's in there good. Yeah, uh, it doesn't have to be too tight. You can always tighten it later. Uh, and then you feed the Velcro in. You should probably cut the Velcro a bit maybe on the sides, like this, if it's too thick. It could be too thick, it depends on the one you use. But I'm assuming these are generally the same size because they're the same um, design. So then we screw at the top one and then the bottom one. Uh, it's honestly not tight, but if you're using the same frame, it has this foam layer at the bottom. I guess they intended it to hold in the battery well, but it actually adds a lot of friction. And, um, if you tighten it enough, uh, then it, it will actually be quite tight because it will be pushing against the foam will be pushing against the bottom plate and adding, uh, I guess a bit of pressure on it. I, I didn't screw the other one the whole way in. I usually prefer to screw in um, these two, uh, the, both of them at the same, um, like incrementally. Uh, so it has a bit of an even pressure. That's generally the, the idea. All right. And then to mount your camera, uh, I can talk a bit about that. Oh, I should also mention, if you want to mount this, uh, the, the camera mount for these uh, patterns here, you're going to want to do it before you put on the canopy, as you already know, because you're not going to be able to get it in after. Um, yeah, so you want to feed this guy through uh, the top here. Just get in there. Come on. Come on, buddy. Yeah, okay, I think you get the idea. I don't think you want to see me fiddle around with this antenna all day. 
but uh, you can feed it through here. You can even feed it through these holes if you really want, if you have something else going up here. You can um, bring a battery lead up here if you want. Obviously mine won't, but you can uh, you can top mount your battery like I said. Um, so these are actually, I don't think these are M2 by eight. I think these might be M3. I think these might be M3 because these are M2 and these are a lot tinier. So yeah, these are probably M3 two by eight. Uh, I'm sorry, M3 by 8 millimeters, or M2.5. Uh, but chances are, if you're if you're building a quad, you probably have these screws already in your uh, nylon kit box, because that's where I got mine too. It's just, actually, I don't think I got mine from there. But yeah, it should be M3, regardless. Um, so let me just unscrew these guys. So these screws are really there just to hold in the camera. They're not actually there to um, increase tension to um, secure it. And I couldn't get a way to, to figure it out. Uh, maybe I just don't have the right screw for it. Um, but I couldn't get a way to uh, actually secure it in place using um, the screws uh, pushing on the camera to hold it in a position. It's Right now it's just held by on by friction, which is a lot of you may, I think, uh, not ideal. But um, yeah. It really isn't, but it won't go anywhere to be honest. And if you're, if I'm worried, I will just uh, add some super glue. So is this coming out? Oh, I guess it's stuck in there for good. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, I think I just got the wrong bit. Um, but yeah, this is basically this 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 screw is basically just there to add, act as an axle for the camera to swivel around on. I don't know how it is on the five inch quads because, and I haven't bought a, a bond fly with a standardized uh, micro camera on it for a really, really long time, so I don't know. I just designed my own really quick, just simple like extrusion for the camera mount. Seriously, this thing's not coming out, eh? Oh, there it is. Just gotta flex it a bit. Yeah, so I just designed, um, my own little ring and I super glued on the camera. There we go. That just has a screw hole on either side. And then I just pry open these two um, uh, front parts of the frame. They're, they're quite tight. I believe this is for a micro camera. I believe that's uh, 14 uh, millimeters apart. Like that, and then I just screw it back in. And then that's, I'm not gonna screw it back in because I gotta re-solder it again because I ripped it. But uh, yeah, you get the idea. So that's my um, ET125 upgrade. I would say this is going to be, I haven't flown it yet actually, but I think it's gonna be quite a, an interesting quad. Um, it's definitely gonna be sub 250 if I'm running 550 3S's uh, at most, um, even with the, the camera on top. Um, you know what, let me give you a weight right now, the total weight. Um, so this could be a cool cinema, t cinematic type drone, um, but if you're going to be doing freestyle, I mean this will be a bit heavy for freestyle, but I probably wouldn't do it for racing. Um, and freestyle you're probably going to have to lose the camera. So right now it's 95 uh, grams. I believe a battery is probably going to be around 20 grams and the camera and the mount are probably going to be another 60 grams. So you're going to be getting close to there, but uh, you're not going to... I'm uh, getting over 250, I don't think, if you're if you're smart about it. So hopefully this was able to help you if you have an ET125 or um, one of the lower models, maybe you can still use the same canopy. I doubt it, but you can try. Um, yeah, and hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, have a nice day.